it's in the Old Bailey. Yeah, let's head let's head in through the cloister. Yeah, elephants hilarious, Sir Theodore. We don't actually know what a real elephant looks like. We have a few bones, and this one guy said he saw one, and he told us, and we painted it. Oh, look at this dude. Say bot. What's up, dude? God give you health, Master Mahler. Brother Sabat, I'm surprised to see you still here. Nudep, I'm having a lot of fun so far, my friend. It's it's very, very interesting. You know, there's very little tutorial, and so I'm trying to figure out kind of what's going on as I play and notice clues and just little innuendo within the game and the presentation to see what's meant to be happening here. As am I, but I will be leaving soon, returning to Rome. I and my bishop regret that we could not reciprocate Father Rudolph's generosity earlier. He showed much kindness to our priests at the Council of Constance many, many years ago. Council of Constance, a meeting of bishops that took place between 1414 and and 1418 in the Diocese of Constance to end the Papal Schism. It was also notable for the condemnation and capture of the Bohemian theologian Jan Hus. He really is, Sir Theodore. He looks like, um, you know, I, I don't know, like Turkish or like Arabic or something. I'm, I'm getting it wrong, but, you know, his entire... Aesthetic feels different. Will you remain in robe? That is up to you, Bishop, but I will miss these mountains in any case. He could be like a Coptic Christian or something. I, I, I don't know. You should travel to Ethiopia, Master Mahler, and see the highlands. Or he's from Ethiopia? Or he's been there? I, I don't know. God has blessed my home with a one... Okay, Ethiopia. This man is from Ethiopia. With a wondrous beauty. I would love to. Someday I still need to return to Nuremberg and open my workshop. You know how it is. Yeah, someday. Until then, if you are ever in Rome, I may still be around. I would like that. By the way, if you have some time in the next few days, it would be nice to share a meal with you and some of the townsfolk. Man, people really want to eat with me. The townsfolk? I am accustomed to strange looks, especially in rural places like these, but I have had kind words with the baker and his wife. Oh, yes, the Albans, Ulrich and Gret. Let's see them. Oh, my goodness. Ulrich looks like Severus Snape. Like, this dude does not look friendly. He gave you kind words? That guy looks like he hasn't cracked a smile since birth. My goodness, very stern fellow. I offered to tell a story to the children and their mothers over a meal someday. Gret seemed excited about the idea, but I would be more comfortable if you were there as well, and armed, if you know what I mean. I can certainly make time. Do you not eat here with the brothers? Yes, but I am a guest and not bound by the rule as they are. What's the rule, dog? <laughs> yes, Sir Theodore, exactly. Isn't that funny? There must be more than this provincial life, says Ulrich. The Rule of St. Benedict of Nursia is a book of instructions for monks living together under the guidance of an abbot. Written in the 6th century, the rule provides the principles for living a monastic life. Rule number one, you eat together. You don't eat with Ulrich. Okay. Father Gano kindly allows me to come and go as I need to. Boy, that seems nice of him. He's really mean to me. Um, so I'm guessing that time is a limited resource, although it doesn't seem like it now. But... 
I'm going to need to figure out, you know, how to fill my schedule. Yeah, I'll make time for you, dude. You seem nice. I do not know what work the abbot has in store for me, but I may be able to spare some time. If you are unable to, it is no trouble. God give you health, Andreas. Thanks, buddy. He's reading the book. That book is the Bible. All right. Kitchen and cellar. Cemetery. Is that the... Is the cemetery... Am I going the right way here? Um, yes, I am. All right. Let's keep going to the east to get to the scriptorium. Oh, wow. Look at this. I got to take a closer look at this. I mean... This interred being a monument to the founder of the Abbey, it's fairly recent. The funds were donated by her descendants. Yeah, um, interesting. So it's a, a female founder of the Abbey. Um, that is a wicked portrait. You, you know, usually when they do the monument, they they put the skin on the skeleton. This is, we want the bones and the shroud the, and the hair. Good work. I like what that artist was thinking there. Focus on the rib. All right, Old Bailey. Let's see, which way do we go? Old Bailey is the right way. Okay. Here's the scriptorium. Fantastic. And here's Prior's house. I need to talk to this dude. Oh, he ain't here. Let's take his stuff. What's this? A Volvel? Oh, look, it's like a... A prize in a cereal box with, like, a hidden message or something. I've seen these before in astronomy and medical tracks. What's this one for? Two wheels. The top wheel has Greek letters and holes cut out to reveal Latin letters underneath. Oh, I wonder if it's, like, a translation key. And the outer edge of the lower wheel is divided into four sections, each bearing an elemental symbol. Greek, oh, occultist knowledge coming into play. Latin and elemental symbols. It's obvious someone with occult interest fashioned this. Great. Ah, a quarter turn of the upper disc aligns a different elemental symbol with the top of the lower disc. Okay. And that reveals a different set of letters underneath. Interesting. I wonder what it's for. A cipher of some sort? I need to investigate more. This has to be connected to something else around here. Interesting. Oh, here's a letter. Can I steal your stuff? Nah. You can only really interact with stuff that's highlighted, so I can't just take his document. And then I don't see anything else to connect it to just yet. Maybe it'll come up later. So it feels kind of like a point-and-click adventure. I made a note of something there. Uh, whose house is this? This is all scriptorium. Over to the church and to the dormitory. Let's go scripts. Let's go to work. All right. And here we are. Oh, there's Piero working hard. And who else we got up in here? We got Adoc. <laughs> Look at this guy, if you know what I mean. All right, let's talk to Piero. How's it going? Andreas, God bless you. So good to see you. Thanks, man. Good morning, Brother Piero. Good to see you as well. I don't like this weather, says Adoc. My bones ache. It means a storm is coming. You know what? That's what Big Yarl or whatever, Big Yorl or whatever that dude's name was, said to me too. He didn't feel it in his bones. He smelled it. But your bones, I trust him. Yeah, Big Yorg says that if you live here 10 or 15 years, you can smell storms coming. And that is definitely Big Yorg's face. Now, I, you know, I don't think it was 
optional to talk to Big Yorg, but maybe it was. And I wonder if how this game works, if I didn't talk to Big Yorg, if I would be able to have this dialogue with this dude right here. Brother Adok has been here long enough that we can always smell him coming. Whoa, let's not get sassy. Do not forget, Brother Guy, the fate of the youths who jeered the aged prophet Elijah outside of Bethel. Mm, yeah, don't mess with Elijah. Are you comparing yourself to a prophet, Brother Adok? I am comparing you to an impudent youth whom the Lord, in his ineffable wisdom, may choose to strike down. Whoa, these co-workers are having... We might need to get HR in here to mediate this conversation. I need to step out of this. I don't want to be called as a witness if there's any workplace violence. I love Brother Guy. That's sweet. Brother Dude. Please show more respect to Brother Adok. You're being mean-spirited. Calm yourself, Brother Adok. You're too sensitive to guys' jokes. Yeah, I'm gonna upset Brother Guy. I'm gonna help out Adok. Stay out of this, Andreas. The old fart can defend himself well enough. I need no defense against the likes of you. That's right, Episcopal. What a guy. God protects his faithful against the Inquisitus. Wow. It's not often you get to say the word Inquisitus. At least I don't. Well, everyone seems quite lively. I suppose that means Prior Ferenc is not overseeing us today. He was here, but then he heard Lorenz Rothfogel had arrived, and he hurried out like a little mouse. Yep, that dude. Ferenc is so desperate to impress the abbot and nobles like Rothvogel. It's pathetic. You feign kindness to Father Abbot and our prior only to speak about them like this behind their backs. It's shameful. Oh, oh no. Baron Rothvogel. His manuscript. I take it it's not done. I just realized that he will want to see his manuscript. How silly of me. Of course that's why he's visiting... Aw, oh, poor dude. Perhaps if you were younger and faster, you wouldn't need to worry so much about patron's visits. Man, Brother Guy is a straight jerk. Yeah, I joined up with the monastery because I was a jerk, and I was looking for some nice old people I could badger about. What's the problem? The Baron is just one client. He has to wait like anyone else. Guy, someday you will stand where Piero is, and a young monk will stand where you are now. Huh. Hump. Anyway, what's the problem? The Baron is just one client. He has to wait, like anyone else. Andreas, Baron Rothvogel is not like anyone else. He has powerful friends, including Prince Bishop of... Freersing? The Prince Bishop of Freezing religious and secular ruler of scattered territories in the Holy Roman Empire, including the lands containing Tassing and Kirsau Abbey. I did not know that. Kirsane is already out of favor. Father Abbot does not want to have to deal with more attention. Well, if Prior Ferenc isn't here, I'm going to work on my masterpiece. Until he arrives. Look at my masterpiece. It's a Bob Ross. Oh, that's right. I need to reference the Indermau Manuscript. The Indermau. A prominent family of the Swiss Confederacy and Austria. Okay. Give me that Swiss Confederacy work. Tap, tap, tap. Zedna, what do you want, Andreas? Oh, is she an anchoress? I wonder if she is. Or an anchorite or whatever, anchoress. You know, like the uh, the women who... I guess you could be a monk, but uh, it usually was women who were like kind of locked in a cell. 
into the church and they just like lived in there. Uh, and they had uh, like this, like a little slit where you could come and seek their counsel. And they were just like so devoted to the church that they were like sometimes bricked in uh, to the church itself. A book, the Indermal Manuscript, the Book of Hours, or or she might not be an anchoress. She might be working at a speakeasy with inside, like, you know, or a gambling hall inside the, the abbey, and they have that little privacy slit, and I have to know the secret knock and password to get access to the speakeasy. Uh, the Book of Hours, a type of illuminated manuscript that contains an abbreviated form of the prayers for the divine office in addition to other religious texts. Most are relatively plain, but wealthy patrons often commission lavish examples with elaborate illustrations. Right. Your hair looks messy today. Did you get enough sleep? Look, lady. Um, could I just get the book? What do you mean? I mean, did you sleep alone or... Oh, Zedna. hey -oh. Um, why do you want to know, Zed? It would be nice to have something to think about during divine reading. Whoa, whoa. Now, we already talked about getting too carnal, all right? Divine reading. Lectio Divinia. It's a Harry Potter spell, is the thoughtful reading of and meditation on Scripture. The practice leads to prayer and contemplation. It is a daily part of life in Benedictine communities. Yes. I don't know if she's an anchoress, if that's what she thinks about divine reading. Um, have you considered the Lord? You really are a cloud on a sunny day, Andreas. Aw. She's all angry. Could I just get the book? Ugh. That's all the way upstairs. Can't you get by without it? All right, so she's not an anchoress. She just is in the, the convent or something. Um, I'm sorry, but I really can't. I need to reference it for my work. No, why are you complaining? Isn't this your job? Isn't writing books your job? Whoa, in green. hey -o. Sister Illuminata. Aw, poor Sister Illuminata. Andreas needs a book and he's being inappropriate with me. Ouch. Andreas. Sister Illuminata, I'd like to borrow the Indermar Manuscript, the Book of Hours. Yes, I overheard. Here, please return it promptly. In blue. All right, so that means something. I got it. I'm sitting down. Brother Piero is spying on me. Yeah, they are separated, Episcacat. So maybe, yeah, that's right. I can't go over there, Episcacat, because of it's segregated by gender, and that's their, like, private area. Andreas, may I see how your manuscript is coming? Of course, your opinion is always welcome. Oh, wow. I am a good artist, huh? Um, kind of? Yes, the composition is lovely. There is a joyful spirit in your arrangement of the figures. I got a lot of work, though, to do with the color. The contrast of colors is also quite nice, rich and beautiful on their own, but not overpowering the scene. Hmm, is that all? It doesn't feel right. I don't know why. It's an excellent interpretation of someone else's work. What do you mean, it's all my work? That's what clients want. What do you want? In green. Spelled wrong. Where are you in this work? I didn't know there was room for me in here. That doesn't concern me. I want to do a good job. I want my clients to be satisfied. I didn't know there was room for me in here. It is inescapable. We all put ourselves into our work, whether we realize it or not. 
What does this painting represent? It's November. In November, we show peasants leading the pigs into the forest to forage on acorns before the slaughter. Andreas, the peasants here are no longer allowed to forage on acorns in the forest. What? They can't forage? Many great lords and abbots across the empire have forbidden it, even Father Gurneau. What difference does it make? This is the way November is painted. But it is not the way November is. Hmm, reality check. Art is illusion, storytelling, but in their most sublime form, these images illuminate a path to truth. It is most important to me that my clients are happy. They won't pay me for truth. Yes, but with God's grace, this book of ours will outlive us all. What will it say to those who see it in a future generation, centuries beyond our comprehension? Interesting. So now they're having a conversation about, like, the job of the artist to represent things for posterity in an in a accurate means so that we can better understand the period that we're looking upon. Maybe? Some will gaze deep into your lines and paint to seek a deeper meaning. What will they find? But you need not listen to my opinions. Those are just the thoughts of one old monk. There is no place for the monastic scriptoria anymore. In truth, this room is a place out of time. Does that make you sad? Why is that? Why has Kursau kept us up for so long? Some people, some places, have a difficult time letting go of the past. I am not among them. The creation of books, of art, is no longer the province of monasteries. So be it. That's right, Sir Theodore. You have to think about how future generations of RuneScape players will think, many centuries from now, about your art and how RuneScape was. More people will be able to write, more will be able to read, and in so doing, be brought to truth. So he's happy about it. Now don't you think there's a danger in anyone being able to write, being able to read anything? I think there will always be a place for artists like you and Brother Adok. You know, what's interesting is, like, this conversation about a danger in anyone being able to re write and read anything, it's an actually a very good conversation to have about our c current period with the internet where anyone can publish whatever they like um, without any fact checking or anything right and and what danger lies in that amount of information being able to be proliferated and accessed at any time by pretty much anyone with the, the financial means to acquire a cell phone and the geological location to get a signal, right? So, like, there is a, you know, perhaps thinly veiled commentary about current day, but this was always a concern whenever you, you know, democratize any kind of technology, as the printing press did. I think there'll always be a place for artists guy's like what about me dude you're not an artist um and brother guy hey crab good evening good to see you it's kind of you to say so andreas but you need not be concerned for me i have lived a long life and am happy to have served the lord when he calls for me i am ready oh Look, time did move. Lunch time? Dinner time? Hey, Cozy, what's up? <laughs> yeah, Piero's great. He's a kind soul. Ah, where's the time going? It's already terse. The monastic hour corresponding to 9 a.m. One of the little hours of prayer... Terce precedes Mass and the chapter meeting. Okay. 
Too much talk. I must ask forgiveness for not honoring the rule. Until later, Andreas. Until later. Yes. Uh-oh. I broke that. Oh, who's this dude? He's angry. He saw it. Oh, it's his wheel. Look, he's doing the occultist stuff. Yeah, Crab, it's kind of like an interactive novel and a point-and-click game mashed up together. I, I knew nothing about it, but it's by Obsidian, and it's very well-reviewed, and I just wanted to check it out. What's going on in here? I spilled my stuff. Sorry about that. Sweet. And so um, I can go talk to Sister Illuminata. And if I open up the map, I'm in the scriptorium. I could go explore. Here's the world map. Here's all the people that we've met in the different locations. The notes that we have on them. Here's the glossary of information that we found in our little book here. I mean, it's... The game is kind of a commentary on writing and the creation of a text in a time when things are changing. The, the Protestant Reformation is in, you know, full effect with Luther. And we're talking about the Renaissance. We're talking about the passing of the torch from the church to be the only place to acquire books and illuminated manuscripts to artists and printing presses, science, the development of, uh, you know, different cultures, the rise of the middle class, all sorts of fun historical things are happening. So it's a, it's a point of great tension. And it's a, it's a game that's like a commentary on that technological shift, perhaps from writing to printing, what that affects how that affects people ideologically, epistemologically, and it's also a commentary, you know, it's a novel, you've got some choice, but it's historical too, you know, the game is deeply historical, and so it, it is, as advertised, completely unlike, you know, anything else that's, that's out there really. Uh, and it's it's been a, a fascinating experience playing this game for the first time, seeing uh, the, the fantastic aesthetic of it, the art style of it, uh, the writing, you know, the spelling changes, the interactive text. Um, yes, and as Cozy is saying, um, you don't have time to do everything. It seems that time is your limited resource, so you can't go everywhere, you can't have a meal with everyone, you can't talk to everyone, and that is perhaps some of the most significant choices that you make. But then you make dialogue choices, and those permanently affect the arc of the story. So it's like a point-and-click adventure, an interactive novel, a choose-your-own-adventure, uh, you know, in a medieval an illuminated manuscript wild well i'm having a good time with this brother adox bio is interesting elder scribe of kursau scriptorium known for his beautiful handwriting and love of anagrams and fish huh that is funny he's like boy do i love anagrams i also love fish so um i'd like to uh explore more of this game but everyone it's my bedtime so I want to say thank you so much, everyone, for coming out and, you know, trying something a little different, seeing what this game was all about. It's free on Game Pass if you want to try it out uh, for yourself. I hope you all have an excellent evening or day wherever you're at. And I'll check you guys tomorrow. We're going to play another new roguelike called The Last Spell and see what that's all about. Episca Cat, Sir Theodore, thanks so much for coming and checking this out. Alex, Cozy, Crab, Fading. <laughs> yes, Crab. Sorry we had to end right after you got here. New Deep, Nick Man, Crispy Bacon, Spellweaver, Wade, Kai, Bad Hair, Albert, Robert, Dane, 
everyone out there, have a fantastic evening. Take care. <laughs>